Hey guys, welcome to Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. It's Jason Samkoviak, and tomorrow is going to be a very cool morning. We are going to go into a spot that I have not been able to ever hunt before. I found it three years ago in spring scouting, barely spent much time in there, but knew it was amazing, uh, and I never got to go back to it, and I have not been able to hunt it because we've not had a northeast wind coming out of the northeast uh, that I have been home in the last three years or that I, I wanted to get over that way if I wasn't somewhere else. So it's my first time since finding it through three years ago that I'm going to go in there and check it out. It's a miserable hike in there. It's pretty, there's a lot of water, a lot of swamp, a lot of crap to deal with. It's a headache to get to, but it's going to be worth it. I'm going to show you here in a minute. I'm going to take you in on my computer and kind of explain why I'm going there. But now we got to get everything basically ready for it to head out there. So I'm going to get my stuff together. So it's all set for in the morning. Got my bow all ready. Uh, that white arrow is the new prototype tough head that you can see in there. And then the other ones are some A Boyer heads in there. But that first one, spot number one, right there, that one is that tough head prototype broadhead that I am expecting to hopefully put through something tomorrow. But I'm going to grab this stuff. We got to carry things out. I'm taking my pack out. I got to grab my rain gears in the truck. I'm going to need my rubber boots. So there's a lot of stuff that I got to kind of get together and get ready um in order to do this and it's going to be raining it'll be raining all day tomorrow and i'm going to be it's going to be like 40 degrees that's that miserable kind of stuff to deal with cold temps rain being soaking wet um just kind of a pain in the butt but we're gonna uh you know i gotta grab my rain gear out of the car get my rubber boots together i think it's raining out right now isn't it yeah it's raining right now so uh just gotta put everything together and make it happen switch the sleds out uh, cause I got my little jet sled in there cause I used a big one for the deer I just killed two days ago. And, uh, so I got to make some changes and switch some stuff around, put this jet sled in there so that it works better than the little one that I have in there currently. Grab my rubber boots, which I don't even know if they are still down here. They were there. No, I'm, I got one set in a truck. I got a couple more up there, but let me go. Take a peek here and see where we're at and what we have happening. But just try and get much of this stuff together tonight so I don't have to mess with it in the morning. Because by morning it's supposed to be raining pretty hard. So, let's see here. Um, of course, the lights didn't even come on. But yeah, i got to swap some stuff out. So we're going to pull some sleds, switch some things around. And uh, i got to find my boots and get some stuff ready. We'll be right back. All right, we are swapping out. See, that one is the one I always carry. The original jet sled is the one I bring with me for everything. And that's what I drug that doe out. But it was covered in blood. And I had it underneath that deer while it was draining in the garage. So that one was stuck. So I brought this one with me on the the last night I went hunting. Uh, so I had one with me. So I, that junior is kind of a backup. But uh, the deer I plan on killing tomorrow is going to be probably big deer, so I'm going to take the big jet sled. This one just fits better in there, keeps my stuff better, and believe it or not, um, pulling through the woods with a deer in it, the big one pulls a lot lighter than a little one. I don't know if it's more surface area or why. This one, like I said, the junior works good. I love having it. I use it for a lot of things, but when it comes to dragon deer, I prefer the original full size, and I can fit it in my, it fits perfect in my renegade, holds my stands in there, all my stuff in there. When I kill a deer and I slide that deer in there, there's no chance of, uh, of any blood or anything getting in there. Love having a jet sled. So we're going to put that big one in the renegade. All right, there we go. Finally, found my rubber boots. So I got my rubber boots, my rain gear, a bunch of clothes here. I'll pick out what I'm going to wear. We're going to throw the bow in there right now so I don't forget it. Then that way, all I have to do is put my clothes on, and I am set and ready to roll uh, in the morning. So it makes it life sweet and simple. So I don't forget nothing, no chances of anything. My pack's in there. Everything's all ready. And uh, just really excited. Like I said, three years of not having the opportunity. Oh, there we go. Three years of not having the opportunity to hunt this spot and to be able to get in there just got it's got me pretty excited. Not gonna lie, I'm I'm pretty fired up and excited to do this. So um but I got everything else basically in here. My pack is in there. I'll turn the light on and show you here in a minute so you can see, but pack's in there. Make sure my bowl fits in here right with this jet sled. Like so. Right there. I'll show you that here in a second so you can see. So they get a hand free. All right, let me grab a flashlight here. So you can see what's going on. But basically, so we got my stand and my jet sled. 
Got my pack right there. Got my boards under there. I always carry those boards with me, especially during here. Because, I mean, you know, the, the rain, the sand, the, the bogs, the trenches from other hunters, everything, it can get pretty miserable out there. So those little traction boards come in handy. And notice I keep my flash, my headlamp right there just clipped on the end. So as soon as I open this up in the morning, the first thing I can do is grab that headlamp, put it on, and be ready to go. And my bow just rides right there on those. Those are a couple clamps. Put some duct tape on them, and it just sits right there. And that bow just stays right there perfect and doesn't move. And uh, I got foot in there and like I said, works like a champ. So there we go. We are basically all set and ready. And uh, we'll be at it in the morning. And I'll, I'm will i going to take you along with me on this trip and let you, you know, let you see how it goes from setup to everything. So uh, stay tuned. All right, here's what I'm expecting to happen here as you're looking at this. This is that stand right here. This circle is somewhere where I'm going to be, okay? I don't know exactly where here. I have not picked that. I'm going to pick that in the morning, but it'll be probably here, 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 something like that. That inside that orange circle is where I'm expecting to set up at in the morning. And here's why. Um, in this area here up this way everything above this blue line that is over here is basically going to be where food is coming from high ground food um, my access way in actually is going to come from here too I'll probably come up this edge over here which means it's about probably pushing three quarters of a mile maybe eight nine tenths of a mile in as I come up this edge break through I'll stay in the water over here and cut in from here through the water to get to here is my plan because you can see the way the wind direction is going i'm expecting the deer to be up here tonight feeding up in here further up actually this is still kind of you know poplars and not all that great yet but it goes up to oaks in that direction up there so i'm expecting those deer to travel through here and then these pink lines are where i'm expecting deer to travel the yellow is areas that I'm expecting them to be looking at for potential bedding areas. I don't know. I've never been there before. I had found this spot three years ago and never been able to hunt it because I've never been home on a northeast wind um, where I've been here to be able to hunt. So I've had this stand for three years. I've came in. I checked all this. There's rubs all over in here. Um, I've seen a lot of great sign through here. A couple of scrapes here. A couple of scrapes there. Rub line through here. Uh, rub line through here. So I've seen a lot of sign in here three years ago um, when I scouted it in the spring. And I'd never made it back into here or anything, and I never made it out here. I just looked at it on a map and said, okay, I'll bet they're betting in these particular spots. Now, they could be betting down here too, but it's irrelevant because my wind direction is going this way anyway. Okay, but I mean, we could technically, um, you know, for all practical purposes, uh, let me get a color picker here. Um, where is my color picker at? Um, where is my... Dang it, usually it's right here where I can find it. Let's see if we can find it here. Um, da -da 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 -da. Nope. But anyway, let's just do this. Let's just fake it here and go back to a yellow and kind of eyeball that and make it like that. But so we could technically say um, that he could be betting here. He could be betting in here. They could be betting, you know, I mean, there's obviously a million places here that they could be betting at. Um, so there, but anything down here is downwind and going to be trouble for me anyway. And we know that deer like to J hook into their bedding. So if you're looking at this again, let me pick something here where you'll see. Oh, there's my color picker right there. Um, let me find something here. Where's a hand so you can see better? Okay, so we know that I'm expecting them to come from here. They're going to come across this. This is all water through here, okay? This is all water. This is all marsh water out here with these trees being high ground. This is all real deep water here, marshy water here, water here. There's uh, a couple more islands out here that go through. But this technically, you know, almost water through here too. So it's almost an island. It's a point of almost an island. And uh, But when they're coming through here, if they're going to bed in any one of these upper yellow areas, those bucks will want to J-hook because of the wind. They want to come in and they want to J-hook into their bedding so they're protecting themselves they want to come in and j-hook to bedding j-hook to bedding j-hook to bedding just like you're seeing with all these pink lines so this spot gives me access to catch them as they come across here hit this island and then j-hook into anywhere that they plan to bed if they're bedding in any one of these so that is my intention and my game plan now if they want to cut this as a funnel 
and use it as a terrain feature to get across, you know, water here, water here, this little crossover right here to be able to come through and run through this funnel or to come through and run this funnel here or this funnel here between this water and this water, whatever they want to do. It's a win-win. So I have a lot of terrain features. I have a lot of bedding area options. I have a lot of things in my favor that all pass right through this orange circle which is why i want to be there uh so that kind of gives you a lay and understanding of what my intentions are and why i actually picked this place all right we just got a break in the rain it's only about a, about a half hour after daybreak here and uh stopped raining a few minutes ago i just took my rain gear off i got my jacket i still got my pants on but i got my coat hanging right there in my pack now and my rain hat off and, uh, but we are set up in here. It's a little, it was a little thicker coming through the main woods than I, than I remember when I came in here in the spring. So I might be a little early. This might be a little better when all the foliage in the woods is down. But I got high hopes. It rained really hard last night. So we did not, I don't, I didn't see any fresh tracks or anything like that coming in in the dark. Um, but here's what we basically got. I'm feeling really confident. So here is that point that I was talking about, the point of woods that you saw right here. I picked this tree because of the fact that I got a little lane. When I was standing down there, the ground, I could see that there's a little bit of shooting into here, and that point ends right here, okay? There's that big pothole bog right there that we saw on the map. This is the point that goes into the woods here. That is the high ground. That I expect any of those deer to come through. You can see the massive trails in here. They're just everywhere going across. Look at the size of those that are coming through this. Here, let me bring you in a little tighter. But, I mean, you can see, look at the ground here. Look at these trails. They're all over through here. And, uh, but this is it. And that out there is where I was talking about bedding. Any of those trees that are out there through there or over here along this point through here. So any of those that they want to get out and bed on, they're going to want to come through here, work to me, and then J-hook into any of that stuff that's down there around that bend, any of that stuff. But you can see how it's pretty open but very deep mossy. You know, that's waist high out there. And those, high, those trees kind of mark high ground. So that's my anticipation. Trails everywhere through this area that little tree line that we're seeing right there is about 23 yards from me so anything this side of that that comes through here i can shoot them anything that goes 15 yards into here i can shoot it so and the wind is blowing that way right towards that pothole bog like we said so uh got high hopes and i'm excited and we got a little time let's see what the heck happens here and how it goes and uh i will keep you in a loop when I came out here in the spring three years ago and scouted this, all of this from that bog through this whole center section, all of this and rolling all the way out into there was all water. You could still see the grasses, but the water line came to like right here. You could still see the grasses coming out of it, but it was like ankle deep water. This whole thing with high ground there and then high ground here. And then, like I said, breaking into high ground out there. So it looks a heck of a lot different here in first week of October than it did three years ago in the spring. But I like it. I, like I said, these trails are rock solid to find all over in here. And I'm pretty impressed. It was either this tree that I'm in, which has a really good cover here. Because of that pine tree right there. And these maples right here next to me. So I'm tucked in pretty good. Or I was even going to go in that pine tree right there. There was a place I could climb right up. And you can see that gap I could have set right there. Expecting a deer to come this way. to had quartering away shots on either side. But I lost that edge right there. Which I can now get here or through here. So this was the better setup for right now. Sure is a pretty stand sight.
half hour we're gonna bail it's like 10 minutes to 11 right now we're probably gonna give it a little bit been raining all morning never really let up too much um my hat here that i'm wearing has kept me pretty protected so i didn't put on my rain jacket um only thing we saw so far was one deer i don't even know what it was but over by that pine tree right there uh, where am i at between these two that pine tree right there i saw a glimpse of a brown thing right there and i got up and looked and i could see it move through there but never saw a head but he came right through there about 50 yards away and uh so far that's been all that we have seen so far and i don't know what it was i don't know if it was alone you know you can't hear nothing it's raining so I have no idea but i have not seen anything where i am we're gonna give about another half hour and uh, then I'm going to shoot a practice trudeau and, uh, you know, before I break down and then we're going to get out of here. All right, we are down. We are pulling out of there. And that uh, was the only thing I saw was that one deer. And just got down, grabbing my, here's a look at it from the, from the ground level. That's the tree I was in. That right there, that uh, little oak right there. And look at it through here. I mean, it's just wrecked. Look at these trails in here. I mean, amazing. Look at that. Right there is my judo. That little leaf from up there, that little yellow leaf right there was my target from up there. And as you can see, I just went perfect right. I mean, I can't complain about that at all. Um, so we're getting ready here. Uh, get everything put back together and head out. But you can see it from the ground, like I said. Pretty thick, you know, perfect area and heavy, heavy travel through here all these there's trails all over in here was that back there right between these two red maples back there by that pine was where i saw that deer come through but that was the only thing i saw all morning i kept hoping to see something come right through any of this walking right to me like i said look at all the tracks you know and it had hard rain yesterday but look at i mean see i mean there there this is this should be being used and I will definitely be back in here again. This is a, a pretty good gold mine little area. I might just be a little bit too early. I'm not sure, but that's the way it goes. I mean, if it was if it was easy to do, everybody do it. And if you kill deer every time you were out, it would be uh, it just be be too easy. But this spot is fantastic. And when you saw the map, you can see why i'm in here and you can see what this is but this isn't private land hunting here this doesn't have the deer densities i don't have any crop fields corn fields egg fields this is all natural real world terrain here in heavily pressured areas so uh this spot here like i said i fully anticipate this being a gold mine spot next time i get the right wind i will try and come back in here and give this a shot it would be minimum two three weeks before i come back here but uh, once the foliage is down in the woods, and I think they gravitate to more of this type of thick, uh, this thicker swamp type terrain like we're seeing here, um, that's when I got a feeling that this will really start to pick up and it'll get closer to, you know, towards that, the closer to rut phases here. So uh, we will be back in it. Yeah, look at that. Down to bare dirt, fresh tracks, and it well, fresh as it can be, but look at these trails through here. Look at this. Look at all this sign. Look at this just wrecked in through these areas here. Just trashed. Massive trails all over in here. That's where we were was that maple or that oak right there above that maple. That oak's the oak we were in. This is what I was expecting. This is that big pothole on the side uh, that's filled with water. Had high hopes in here. Very, very high hopes. But uh, real nice looking area just trashed in here as far as sign again no fresh fresh tracks because it's not uh but look at this look at these trails i'm on through here so you know it's a really solid area and uh yep i had pretty good expectations here this turning into something i kind of look in here too as we walk out of here i'm not afraid to make noise because like i said it's going to be a few weeks before i would ever come back out to here but yeah, they just, like I said, pretty impressive. Not going to lie. I like the area. I like, look at the sign. So, yeah, I had big plans, big hopes. And uh, nothing came out of it. But it was a good day. Cannot complain. I'll be back out tonight somewhere else. One of my other spots here that we'll head into. Yeah, look at the trails. Look at this through here. 
I mean, like I said, just seeing, oh, there's rubs right there. See that rub right there? And that little tree, just a little rub right there. Uh, like I said, the sign's here. The sign's here, it's a nice place, but look at the trails. Look at this, look at this trail come through here. I mean, just awesome. Just awesome sign. Nice thing I did too is uh, I got my rain gear on my pack. It rained all morning. If you're like me and you're using a, you used to do what I said and use a Columbia Center jacket like this. Um, I stayed completely dry. This hat is amazing. Uh, I've done videos on that hat, but it keeps you know, really dry as well too. Oh, another rub. Right there is another old rub. But that hat keeps you dry. Everything out here is just, uh, like I said, been soaked this morning, but man, I am comfortable. I am content wearing those first light boundary storm type pants that I wear. Uh, the, the boundary storm vapor light jacket on my pack. But this Columbia Center jacket, windproof, very water resistant, very affordable. Um, I, you know, I, I got three or four of these now. I love these things. I hunted them real hardcore, uh, you know, pretty much all season. But even in the rain, like I said, I got rained on all morning and never had to put that jacket on other than when I walked in. Hearing something. So yeah, so anyway, there we go. That's going to pretty much end this one. I got to try and figure out how I get out of here. Easiest way. I came in a totally different way because I didn't want to screw up deer. And uh took me, you know, so I had to go an extra few hundred yards. And now on the way out, I'm just busting straight through. You know my rule. Come in quieter and a baby mouse peeing on a cotton ball. And when I leave, I sound like a freight train. Because it's over. I don't care. I'm not coming back here for... Uh, like I said, a few weeks if I do, so it took me three years to be able to catch the right wind to be able to come in here and hunt this, you know, the first time, this time anyway. So not really concerned about how much noise I'm making or what it is because I am heading out. So, all right, thanks for watching everybody, and uh, I will be back with a, another video here real soon for you. Wish I'd have killed a deer on this and had something to, you know, to show you to kind of round that one out, but such is life on public land hunting. So, all right, thanks. Talk to you soon. Bye.